Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Leadnap Gaming. Today we're going to do a quick tutorial on the upgrade and melting processes and we're going to cover some details from last week's video that weren't clear or you might not know. Before we get started, I do want to thank all of you for making last week's video the most rapidly watched video in the channel's history. We hit 1,000 views in 7.5 and hours and 2,000 views in less than 12. Thank you all for sharing the hell out of that and showing up to watch. It means a lot to me. Now, if you're new to the channel and you like the content, please do hit that subscribe button. And because many people still don't know, every month, two winners are chosen to have their names added to the hat. And at the end of this year, those names are going to be drawn from to see who wins a new ship. And it'll be something bigger than we normally give away. What? Well, we're going to see what the sale brings us. So details are in the description section below for how to get entered into that. In last week's video, we talked about how to use the annual sale as a reservation system to get the ships you want and, if possible, at the best price that you can. I know I went fast on a few things, so this week we're going to clarify a few things and I'm going to demonstrate how to actually perform some of these steps. This video is unscripted because I'm going through and actually hitting the buttons and whatnot live for you. Normally, these videos are produced over a period of weeks, which is why I incorrectly stated that the IAE convention in the verse would be at Bevic in Area 18. This is normally where this stuff's been, and CIG did not make the announcement uh, that it would be at Microtech until after the video was uploaded. I mention all this just because, again, some things may not be in the order that I would have scripted them into had I scripted this video out. So let's go ahead and dive in, and hopefully it'll clarify quite a bit for you. As I mentioned before, you should plan for the sale. And we're going to look at some remnants of my planning from last year. We can see right here, this is kind of how I did this out. And I was trying at this point in the sale to spend only $190 in credit. So on the 2nd of December, these are the CCUs that I picked up. So I picked up an Andromeda to Warden CCU for $35. I picked up a Prospector to a Vulcan for $45. I want to make something clear here that these are not necessarily from seeds and that these I had specific plans for and how I planned them out. But the big takeaway here is this. I got all of this for $190. I went after 24 hours. I melted the, all of these. And on the 3rd of December, I picked up all of these CCUs again for the same $190 in credit. Now, You'll notice down here, why did I buy three Freelancer Max to Prospectors? Well, these $5 seeds are essentially seed-to-seed -seed CCUs. The Freelancer Max is really easy to get, and I wanted to make sure that, one, because I have one, but two, just I gave myself the ability to reach the Prospector in the event that it no longer is available all the time from another ship that's generally available all the time. It was $15 in credit that if I never use them, I never use them, but I had $190 to spend on the 3rd of December, so I filled it in. That's what I was talking about with those seed to seed CCUs. For the fourth, you can see kind of the bigger point in why this whole thing is actually valuable to you. The Orion is incredibly expensive. It is currently listed at $675. I had $190 in credit. So there was no way at last year's sale I was going to pick up an Orion. However, I do own a Carrick. Now, I'm not actually planning to melt my Carrick, but even if I took that from my regular seed of an Aquila, that was still going to cost me three, what, uh, 320, I want to say off the top of my head, to 675, more than $190. But a Carrick to Orion CCU only cost me 75. Now, I have to work to them, I have to get to them, but... I can put these in my fleet now whenever I want to as long as I make these other moves. That's the key. That's what we're talking about. Let's go ahead and take a look at my fleet roster here. This column here, this is the ships that I actually want to have in my fleet. Now, it's not final. You see some question marks and stuff in here. You can change things around if you want. But what I want to show you, one, is a consideration you need to have when you buy LTI tokens. You need to know where you want to put things, and that's important. So right here, this is the package that all of these things come in. And this is an important column to have because when I go into my hangar, I have to know where to actually find these things to apply the CCU. The key here is this though. This UEE Exploration Mega Pack from 2948, which is a concierge package, includes all of these ships. 
actually included different ships. These are what they currently are in my fleet now. But this is where my 600 exploration ship came from. This is where my Carrick came from. And the thing is, is that I can't melt any of these ships without melting this entire package. That's a consideration you need to bring into this. So the only ships I put in here are ships that I know for sure I absolutely want in my fleet that I'm never going to get rid of. Now, some of these might be a little weird to you, but the Pirate Cat, for example, that CCU is a gift. It's something I always want to keep. You can see up here that I'm planning to put my M2 Hercules up here. And even though I think the C2 is a better value, if I only had one, I would take the M2 for a variety of reasons. But again, you can see my Prowlers up here, the whole D, that stuff's up here. Why I bring this up is because, for example, the Sons of Centauri pack, which is not a concierge benefit, but was a concept sale benefit, CIG likes to bundle LTI tokens and sell them at a slight discount because they know that people are going to buy up LTI tokens. At the time, this seemed like a really good idea because I picked up three LTI tokens at a discount to what it would have cost me to buy them individually. And it was three Ranger bikes, the TR, the CV, and the other one. Now, my 325 is here, and you can see here that I've put my C2 and my Star Runner. Again, if I melt one of these, I melt them all. And my 325 has a special edition paint on it. This I'll never melt either, and that's why it's a safe place to put these. However, you'll notice as we come down, right, that my Polaris is on a G12R. It's not because it's I might melt it someday, but it's just this way, it's protected. There might someday be a big money move where I get most of these ships back that I decide, yep, I'm gonna melt that. And that's why, again, I paid extra money. I could have bought three Pisces in a pack and I bought them individually. This way, they're separated out and I'm not tied in. This is really the way most of the pros are doing it now. Ignore the packs pay the couple dollars extra to just pay full price for each token, but you get so much more flexibility out of that in your fleet planning. Let's continue on with this because we don't want to get too long in the tooth. You'll notice slot. This is important because if I come over here, here's my list of CCUs. This is the sort of stuff you're going to need to draw out, and I like to use Excel. I know other people I've seen there planning and they do different things. You can see here, here's all of the CCUs I have. Here are those Prospector Freelancer Max CCUs we were talking about before, right? And they're not attributed to a slot. But we can see here, for example, my C2 Hercules is going to slot 10. Today, what we're going to actually be covering is this one right here. My Star Runner to Terrapin. It's a $5 CCU. The Terrapin costs $220. Now, I have a Ranger TR, so what that means is I need to get that Ranger TR to a Terrapin. That's going to cost me $180. What we're going to see here is a little different, and let's go ahead and take a look into my hangar and see where some of this stuff is in real life. So the screen we all have, right, is our hangar. So I want to go ahead and show you this right now. If we go to buyback pledges, here are all of the different CCUs that I purchased and then melted. And you can see I can buy them back. Now, they don't have a price because their price isn't fixed. If it's in buyback, if the Ares Inferno price rises, the cost of this CCU is going to rise as well. People get put off by this and they freak out. You have one opportunity to buy back a pledge with store credits. I can buy every single buyback in here right now if I give CIG cash. But every quarter, as I remember it, you get one opportunity to buy back with store credit. That means, for example, last year, like I said, I melted my Corsair to get the money I was going to use for the sale. After the sale, I could turn around and take that same credit and get my Corsair back. If we come back to our hangar, we can see here, here's the Terrapin to Mercury Star Runner Standard Edition CCU that we are going to apply to take a Terrapin to a Star Runner. That means we need to get a CCU from that Ranger bike up to a Terrapin. Now, I've gone ahead and already brought this baby up too. So this is a Prospector to Terrapin Standard Edition. This is gonna be an important thing to understand here in just a moment, so remember that we saw this. So now let's talk about a couple different things about the website so that you know how to actually navigate and do this stuff. When you're logged in and you're on the website, you're gonna to go to the Pledge Store. Now, something a lot of people don't realize, one, these are the starter packages that they show you, but if you click Game Packages or View All Game Packages, You'll see here, you can buy any of these ships to be a game package. I bring this up for a couple reasons. If you own a Cutlass Black game package and you want to melt that, you can. 
that you can melt your game package, you won't be able to go into the verse, but your account doesn't go away. You can melt those. And you could melt that and then just go back and get a Mustang Alpha starter pack if you wanted to. You might do something like this if you were trying to LTI your whole fleet, for example. My game packages look a little different because I am concierge. And you can see here the concierge packages, right, give me the option to get a game package with different ships. And here's the current exploration mega pack that would give you these ships but they wouldn't give you, in fact, this is probably, yeah, I can't remember if mine was originally a Dur or not, but this is actually probably the same package, just a little more expensive than my original one, right? Uh, and this lets you get these ships all with LTI for your game package, and that's why I don't have one of those in my fleet. And I just wanted to show you that, but if you just want to buy standalone ships, and again, you're going to get them with whatever they're sold with, but this is important and you'll see why, you go to extras and standalone ships, and you'll notice there's a lot more ships here that you can now always buy. Let's take a look at these, because this is one of the biggest things you need to understand when I talk about seeds. So right here, here's our Constellation Aquila. This is almost always available, and I say almost because it is always available, but that could change. This is the seed I like to use for my very expensive ships because it, prior to the mole, was the most expensive ship always available. That could change, but the Constellation is Chris Roberts's like favorite ship. It's his baby, so it'll probably always be available. However, the Prospector is the other seed I really like to use, and here's why. The Prospector is the single-person entry-level mining ship. That means it's probably never not going to be sold because it's the entry path into the game in a lot of ways, especially if you want to get into mining. The other reason that I use this over a lot of these other ships that, yes, are also always available is because let's make believe that you were using an Avenger Titan as your seed. Well, those Talon LTI fighters that came out a couple months ago that are going to be released in December, those cost more than $55. So if you bought one of those as an LTI token, every CCU that comes out of an Avenger Titan can't be applied. That's why I really like the Prospector as a seed, because they're almost always less than $155, which allows you to upgrade from that to this. So let's actually go ahead and take a look at that upgrade process. So we come into the hangar and we can see right here, actually, let's first go look at my chart here. So today on the channel, we're going to upgrade a Ranger TR to a Mercury Star Runner. I have a Terrapin to Mercury Star Runner CCU, which is what we're actually going to use, but it's a Ranger TR. And the Terrapin's the seed, but the Terrapin isn't always available. So we got to jump through a couple hoops. Well, the solution to that is right here. I can go from the Prospector, the actual seed, to the Terrapin. Once I have the Terrapin, I can go to the Mercury Star Runner. We need to put in the first step of this dance, which is coming over here to Extras and going to Ship Upgrades. So now we're on this screen, and we can see right here, here's all the ships that are in my hangar. There's my Carrick, my Prowler, right? We could upgrade those if we want. Our chart tells us we're going to upgrade the Ranger TR, a $40 value. Now you can see right here all of the upgrades that I can currently buy for this. So I could do the Prowler because of the subscriber exclusive, but otherwise I could go up to an Aurora CL, You'll notice the Grey Cat Buggy, $15 isn't in here, and again, that's because this is a $40 bike, the Grey Cat Buggy's only $15, and you can't CCU down. But you'll notice as we scroll down here into the $220 range, that, uh, hmm, the Terrapin's not here, but the Prospector is, because as you again notice, the standalone ships and what you can upgrade to are the same list. So we're going to go here and click Prospector. Great. Now we're going to click add to cart. So once you've gone through the checkout process, which you're all familiar with and I don't need to show you, we can again now see right that we've had our checkout success. And now we can see right here our Ranger TR to Prospector CCU. So now we have three more steps to go. We need to upgrade this CCU 
to then use this CCU to then use this CCU. To apply it, all you need to do is click the little expand arrow here and then click apply. This screen comes up and it's going to show you that we're going to replace our Tembril Ranger TR with a prospector. From here, you have to select the package it's going to go to. Now, I only own one Ranger TR at this point, but if you had multiple, it's going to show you all the options for where you apply it. Pay attention to these little numbers at the end because that's a serial number to the individual item in your hanger. And if you owned multiple TRs and you weren't sure which one it was going to be, this would be how you would determine that. So you go ahead and click that and you click next. From here, you need to enter your password. So now that I've entered my password, I'm gonna click apply and you can see here now, the upgrade was successfully applied. Now, that screen disappears very quickly as you just saw, which is part of the reason I'm showing you this. If we now come look in my hanger, we get down here and we can see right here, right? So we have a Tumbrel Ranger CV, which this I purchased individually. This is the Sons of Centauri pack that I purchased. And you'll notice when we expand this, that we see the Ranger CV that still exists in there. We see all the stuff that came with that package, which you'll keep even if you apply everything over it. We can see that 325 that I own, and now we see a prospector. And you can also see that this contains lifetime insurance. When you upgrade, you always upgrade onto whatever it was. So if we look at the standalone Ranger CV I had, you'll see here that it came with this cargo vest, it came with the Selfland hanger, and with this 315 Explorer, which, as I mentioned before, my 325 and my 315 both have special edition paint jobs on them. Here's our Sons of Centauri War Pack, and like I said, there's the Prospector, but we're not done. One thing that is really nice is that we can just sort this now by upgrades, and we get right back to our upgrades. Now I want to make a point here. Like I said before in my last video that you can save money by doing this. You're seeing here, right, that to get my Mercury Star Runner, I have to pay the $225 that a Mercury Star Runner currently costs. Now we can't actually see what the Star Runner costs because I don't have one to show you, and we could do that with melt value, and I'll show you that in a bit. Because these CCUs are in my hangar, right, this is not my buyback, these are fixed prices. For example, I have this Aegis Hammerhead to Polaris upgrade, and if I wanted to see what that would give me in melt value, I can click exchange, and I can see that this is a $25 value. The price of the Polaris could rise, and this price is fixed, right? I don't have to pay money to upgrade this. Uh, so if they're in your hangar, as you see here, this is locked in value. If the merchantman rises in cost, I won't pay the rise because I have this CCU right here. That's why this system is so novel and protects you. Okay, so now we need to upgrade our prospector to that Terrapin. So we're going to get in, come in here, and we're going to click Apply Upgrade. Now, this is again where I told you you need to pay attention because you'll notice we have options now. And this is because in my Exploration Mega Pack, I have a prospector already. So we definitely don't want to do it on this. We want to do it to the prospector that sits in the Sons of Centauri pack because that's what the chart, my chart, tells me is where I'm putting this upgrade. So now we apply it. And now from here, we've applied it as you can see, and now we have a Terrapin back in my fleet. If I logged into Star Citizen right now, I would have a Terrapin. But we want to get that Mercury Star Runner. So rinse and repeat. Again, apply upgrade, and now you'll see again. I only have one Terrapin, and it's in the right place, right? The Sons of Centauri pack. Click it and apply it. And there it is. It's done. It's there. But how can we be sure about that? Well, I'll show you. Okay, unfortunately, the Sons of Centauri pack is mislabeled, so you can't actually use the filter to go find it. I went ahead, went and found it, and it's right here. So we can go ahead and expand this now, and we scroll down, and there's our new Mercury Star Runner. It's applied inside this package, and notice it doesn't change anything else that's in there. CAG looks at clothing, hangers, uh, ships, all of that stuff are just items in the store, right? So like we see here, this vest and my ship are both in this package, and unfortunately you can't apply anything over those because I really don't care so much about those, but you'll also see it contains lifetime insurance. 
whatever you apply a CCU to, it will keep everything that's in that, which is a really important thing and that I wanna cover really fast. We're actually gonna go ahead and use this one just because it's a more simple example. The 315P was an original concept for Star Citizen. So I obviously didn't get one with LTI early on. My 315 has lifetime insurance because this Tumbrel Ranger CV, when I purchased it, it was the concept sale and concept sales always sell with lifetime insurance. So this was an LTI token. And then I just applied the 315 into it because CCUs always keep the statistics of whatever is inside of here. There is an exception to that and I'll cover it in just a second. If I go to melt this, you'll see I'm gonna get $68 value even though the Ranger CV is a $35 ship bike. If I melt this, I will lose this 315. A Tumbrel Ranger CV war bond is what is gonna go back into my buyback and whatever I applied to it is gone. You'll get the credit value for it but you won't be able to buy to a, like recover the CCU out of this, which is part of my point when I was talking about that exploration mega pack, right? So when we're looking at this exploration mega pack, if I melt this, I will lose the CCU that I used for this Caterpillar Pirate Edition. I will lose my Prowler, right? And I will lose any other ships that I put in here. I'll lose those CCs. I won't be able to reapply them, which is why I can't melt this. Because those are ships that aren't available for sale necessarily. If I put a Polaris in here, I'll lose that CCU. Another important thing to understand, standard edition versus special edition. So this change only occurred a couple months ago. When I purchased all of my CCUs, they were just CCUs and CIG has made a change. Notice my Prowler is just a straight up Prowler. When the Prowler released, it included the AV's helmet. This was a bonus. You'll notice today, right, that we upgraded to a quote unquote standard edition Mercury Star Runner. That's probably because when the Star Runner is released, CIG is going to throw some other cool bling in there to make you want to buy it. I'm not going to get that bling. I got the AV's helmet because I already owned a Prowler. However, that has changed. Now I have standard edition ships, which means that they're different from what's released. So keep that in mind. CIG is really moving to this new. You get extra stuff when you buy it on release. And you can do that, which is cool, and you can spend the couple extra dollars that's in that price bump to get those things if you want. You can always wait for ships when they come out on release. A concept when it goes to release is always sold for 30 days. It is always available at that point to be CCU'd to. The exception to this is limited ships like capital ships. Topic for another day. But I just wanted to show you that because this is something new, it's something that hasn't been described very well and explained, and it's something to know. I got the AV's helmet because CIG hadn't made these changes yet, but all of my CCUs now, so you can see here, right? Constellation Aquila to M2 Hercules. But when I click buy back, it's going to throw standard edition on top of it. And that's what that says. Now, I also just wanna show you one other thing. Lastly, I mentioned to you that when you apply a CCU, you keep the original value of the CCU. There is an exception, however, and that is right here. If you apply this Prowler to an LTI token, you are only going to get 12 months insurance. It is going to overwrite the insurance and it's telling you it will do so right here. This might seem like a screaming deal because you're gonna be able to get a Prowler and it's not the annual sale right now and it's not normally sold. But you'll note it includes the hangar flare and it's 12 months insurance. It's not the Prowler standard edition, it's just the Prowler. The point is this will overwrite your insurance. So you need to be very careful of that when you buy CCUs that they don't say and an insurance value, right? So that's why I wanted to show you that. 
Like I said, guys, I know this was a little longer than I normally do, but I actually wanted to show you the steps and explain in detail a couple things that I didn't explain and I've sent numerous emails and replied to you guys in the comments. So keep down in the comments. If you still have questions, you need something clarified, hit me up down there. If you've got other tips or ideas, let everybody know down there. Thank you all for watching. Subscribe if you haven't, like this video, share it with your friends, and as always, I will catch you all next time.